Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, My Quilt Planner, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Word Art and Stitches, Stitch Snapshots, and Perfect Stitch Viewer. Tonight's webinar feature our Perfect Embroidery Pro. Put your wizard hat on for auto-digitizing. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. The tech support team of Nancy R, Chris L, Tamara E, Dory N, and our wizard of auto-digitizing straight from the Gryffindors Girls Dormitory. Take it away, <laughs> Catherine Artinas. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Dory. There is one other wizard that I'd like to put on my list, and a big thank you to Roy, who is actually the magic behind all of our inspiration software. Tonight we play with the auto-digitizing wizard, which allows us to create embroidery from vector or raster images in a few simple steps. I think we need just a bit of review on artwork. First, we need to make sure that the artwork we are using is of good quality for editing and that we have permission to use that artwork. Here are my new favorite sites I use for public domain copyright free clip art. To review, there are two main types of artwork, raster and vector. And as you see our picture here, raster starting with an R has ragged edges. As you see here with this S blown up, you can see all of those ragged edges. And that's because raster images are made up of a grid of dots called pixels. With vector, starts with a V, we have very smooth edges. So that's an easy way for you to remember which one is which. When you change the size of a raster image, you shrink or stretch the pixels themselves which could give a loss of clarity or very blurry image, such as this top one. Vector images are made up of shapes from points and lines and curves. And the relationship of those allow us to size up or down and not alter the clarity of a vector image. For a more detailed and comprehensive explanation of raster and vector, you may want to take a look at the August 2015 webinar, Artwork Appreciation 201. When we take a look at this slide, we see all of the types of artwork that we can use with Perfect Embroidery Pro, the procedures that we can use. This evening, of course, is going to be about auto-digitizing. And just a review for you on raster and vector, our rasters are JPEGs, PNGs and bitmaps. Our vector images are Windows Metafiles or our scalable vectors. Those are the two you probably are most familiar with. Let's see how that wizard works. We'll jump into PEP. The button that we are going to be using most often this evening is right up here with our wizard hat. We'll go ahead and click that. We're brought into the wizard. The last image that you have played with will be shown right here in this path. We're going to go get our image for this evening. And as we are brought into images, let me review for you that path. You're going to start on your hard drive, find your dime folder, and then your images folder. And that's where we're resting right now. If you take a look at this bitmaps folder, we'll be using that as well for this evening. We're going to start with a, uh, a duck, and we'll come into our bitmaps. You see right away that our bitmaps are in a list format. I'm going to come up here to our view window, click on the drop down, and ask it for large icons. They're blown up larger. We see our Windows metafiles. This is a type of image that you will not see uh, portrayed here in our view because of Microsoft. It is not a perfect stitch viewer thing. It is a Microsoft thing that does not show Windows metafiles as images. 
we, we can scroll down to take a look and see some of our JPEGs, which are the rasters. This list is very long. It would take me a while to scroll through. So what I'm going to do instead is come down here to Files of Type, come over to the drop-down arrow, use that, and ask to see just my JPEG images. And that isolates the raster images for us to play with right here in the beginning. Here's the first one we're going to play with, so I'll do a double-click on that. And once again, here's the path for that design. C colon, dime, images, bitmaps, and there's our duck. We're going to come here to the next button. We're brought into our transformation screen, which allows us to size the duck. For these first couple of images, we're going to leave all the defaults. I want to make sure that you're comfortable with coming into the wizard, getting the design that you want, and to bring it uh, to the design page. So we'll leave it at the three by two and a half. Come down here and do a next. We're brought into the color reduction screen. And once again, we're going to leave all the defaults in place. We see that there are five available colors. You may notice that the number one, white, does not yet have a check mark in it. We'll come back to that idea and play with that so you can see the difference. But for now, we'll leave all of the defaults. We'll click on Finish. And it'll take just a moment to render that duck onto the screen. I'll turn on the 3D, and I'll back it out just a little bit. so you. And he's very cute. And that didn't take us very long at all to do that duck. Let's try it again. We'll go back to our wizard, into Browse. Once again, I'm going to come down here and choose just my JPEGs so that very easily I can find our pink butterfly. We'll do a Next. Again, I'm leaving all the defaults. You can see this is a little smaller. We'll do a Next. We have five colors that are available in this design. We'll do a Finish, and we bring that butterfly to screen. He'll be a little smaller because that was the default size. I'll move him over there just a little bit. All right, clean screen, back into the wizard. And this time, instead of using our raster images, Let's go for our vector images. Now, this particular list, as I said, is very long. So if I'm going to go after a Windows Meta file, a vector image, I am going to come back up here to my view and ask it to do a list, because that way I can scroll through that alphabetical order much faster than if I left it as those large uh, icons. The one we want to play with here is Butterfly 151. You can see right over here in our display window, we can take a peek at it before we open it. We now see that particular path for our Butterfly 151. Let's do it next. He is a lot smaller than our duck. We'll go ahead and do a next. He has five colors, and we'll do a finish. And once again, I'm just going through a couple of them so you get the feel of where we go and how we can move through if we like everything about our design. It'll take just a moment to render. He comes in. I'm going to move him up here a little bit, turn on our 3D, back it out, and I'll go to 100. And you can see here that he has a lot of satin stitch in the different areas of the butterfly. All right, one more we'll do with all the defaults. We'll go into Browse. Uh, this time I want Drink. So my list is already there, and I can do two clicks in that scroll bar, come down to drink number one. I see it over here in my image view. We'll do an open. It's in the path. We'll do a next. The, the size of this is quite large. Uh, we'll do a next. And here, the white is not the first in line. The blue was first in line. It's because it is the dominant color here, and we'll go ahead and do a finish. This one will take a little bit longer to render. It's larger. But what you'll notice in this one is that we have all fill stitch, whereas in our butterfly, we have almost all satin stitch. The reason for the choices is based on an algorithm in the wizard that determines the area that is being assigned stitches, and it determines the size of that area, whether it gets a satin stitch or it gets a fill stitch. 
once the design is on your screen, you can do whatever you'd like with it. For example, I could go into this blue on the glass. I don't really want it to fade into that uh, aqua circle. So if I come down here and right click on a color, I can change that color. I could go in and do whatever I wanted to either of these designs. All right, now we're going to slow down a little bit and take a look at the options that we have for our wizard. So once again, we'll go to our wizard. I need to do a browse. I am going to go back to just my JPEGs, so I'll use my drop-down arrow, JPEG. I'm still in my list. Oops, I think I've got my wrong ones here. I don't want bitmap. I want my JPEG. And then do my view. And I am going to go to the large icon so you can see which one we are playing with. And it is this one right here, the flower design. I'll double click it. It's in our path. We do a next. And we now take a look at this design. We're going to change one of the sizes. I want this to fill up my 4-inch hoop. So I'm going to change the width to a 3.9. And did you notice that when I change that size, the height also changed. That's because the wizard is set up for a maintain um, the aspect ratio by default. You may remember that in other ways when we size different parts of our designs we can change that so it doesn't change proportionately but in the wizard that proportional sizing is uh, what we have to work with. And it works very well because it's going to keep your design uh, nicely shaped. At this point we'll do next. And we'll take just a moment now to play with this color reduction. You can see that we have two greens. We have a grass green and an olive green. And you see where those are in the design over here. I could come over to numbers of color. Seven is what is showing. I'm going to use the drop down arrow to change it to six. And do you notice that it took away the grass green color? Now, it took it away here from the chart, but it did not yet take it away from the picture, and that's because we need to turn on the preview. We'll click on Preview. I'll put that back to 7. And you can see grass green on each of our tulips and the olive green in the center of the design. Once again, if I click on that drop-down arrow for 6, you can see that it changed the grass green to the olive. If I go down to 5, it's going to take, care of, uh, take away all of the green, and we're left with this sort of mustard yellow color. I could continue to remove colors, and you see what it's going to do here. It's going to take off one by one by one. It has to apply color to the design, so it simply makes... Um, what the colors that were removed, it has to make it with one of the colors that are still there. The white in this case is the dominant color, so that's why white is in the first box. Let's go ahead and put back all of our colors, because I like the look of all of this with a color. Once again, I'm going to um, use our white check mark with a different design, not this one. We'll go ahead and do a finish. It'll take just a moment to render. And we'll come up to our screen and see our design that has uh, the majority of which is going to be a fill stitch. But once again, whenever the design comes to screen, we can do whatever it is that we'd like to do to that design. We could size it. I could go into that size and take off that maintain ratio if I wanted to. Uh, whatever it is that we feel we'd like to do, we now can do once it's on our screen. I'll turn on our 3D over here. Let's play a little bit with this design. Again, as I said, we can do whatever it is that we'd like to do. Let's go ahead and select the blue color over here in your sequence view. I could come over and right-click on any of my existing threads and make that change. We also could remove colors. Now, instead of doing a delete, I'm simply going to click on the eyeball so that it hides that color, and I'll just go down and click on each of the eyeballs to hide all of the colors, and you see that we are left with the black um, outline of the design, and you could do this and save this as its own design that could be more of a quilting 
or a red work kind of thing for your design as a complement to the filled in design. I'll come over here and right click, show all, my design is back as it should be. There is one other thing that I'd like to do. If you take a look over here in sequence view, the black is first, meaning it's going to stitch out first. You may remember that in our colors listed, we had white and then black, and then it went on to the uh, other colors. So we did not choose the white to become stitches, so the black was the first color and therefore in the first position. But what I would like to do is select that black and come up here to your Move to Front button so that the black last thing to stitch out, and I think that makes for a little bit more uh, dramatic look to that particular design. So once again, we can do whatever it is that we would like to do to a design already on screen. Let's try another. We'll go to New Screen, back into our wizard, go to Browse. Now this time, uh, it is still in my large icons, but that's okay because the one I'm going to use is right here up front, Apple. We see what that'll look like. We'll go ahead and do an open, and here we'll do a next. And we're going to play a little bit with our options here. I am going to make this three inches in height. Again, notice that it changed the width automatically. We'll do a next. And here in the colors, um, I think I like everything that the wizard is offering for me. I'm not yet ready to use this white background, so I'll leave that check mark uh, not checked. I guess the box not checked. But I do want to bring your attention to our image editing options. You can see that at the moment the hand tool is not available to us. But when I click on zoom, I have zoomed in on my apples but the palm, the hand tool becomes a pan tool, just like on our design screen, and I can move around in this design to get a closer look at the design itself. Now, you may notice that I have small black dots, different places in this design, especially around my green apple, and I think that I would like to go in and clean those black dots up. I don't need those to become thread. To do that, we're going to click on our Edit button. It brings me into the paint accessory that comes with Windows. And I know you have this because Perfect Embroidery Pro is a Windows-based software, just like all of our inspirational design software. So um, I know that you have Windows, therefore I know that you have paint. It is a very um, easy product to use. It's a photo editing, and it has a, a number of bare bones tools to it. Certainly there are more on the market that are sophisticated, but this very often will do just what we need it to do. The first thing I'm going to do is click on View. I'm going to zoom in so that I can get a closer look at some of these black marks that I want gone. I'll move my screen a little bit so I can see them. Let's go back into Home. I'm going to choose my eraser. Come over here to Size. Click on that and choose the widest that I'm allowed. And here you see my checkbox, which represents my eraser. I'm going to hold down my mouse key and drag and erase those black marks. If I have oops and I go into my apple, I simply do an undo. But I can come in here and erase whatever I need. You also can grab a pen or a paintbrush and you can add things to a design, whatever it is that you'd like to do. Now, even though I know that these dots are too small to be rendered as thread, I'm going to take care of them while I'm here. I'll come back into view, do a 100%. Here's my apples and everything is as I'd like it to be. What I now need to do is come up to the menu bar at the top, actually the toolbar, that has the save icon. Click on that and then come over here to the right and click on the X for paint. It brings us back into our wizard with all of those changes made. All right, once again I got there 
by clicking on Edit. If you see this ellipse button right next to Edit, what that allows you to do, if you by chance have a more sophisticated um, photo editing software such as Corel or Photoshop or Photo Elements, anything like that, you can actually access those um, through this screen right here. But I chose to use Paint because I know we all have it. With the, all of those editing things in place, let's go ahead and do a finish and our Apple will come to screen. Again, takes a little time to render. I'm going to throw on our 3D and back this out a little bit for our apples. Move him over to the side. So here are our apples. Uh, we're going to come back to those. Some of you might have already spotted some things we want to do here. But before we do, I actually want to go back into the wizard. The last image that you were playing with is still there. That happens to be the one I want. Let's do a next. You may remember that we changed to a three inch. I'll do a next. And it is here that I want to, for the first time, put a check mark in the white. And what I am saying by that check mark is yes, I want all of this white background rendered in stitches. All right, let's take a look. We'll do a finish. It takes just a little bit of extra time because of those extra stitches, but we'll come up and have our second apples on screen. And really what I wanted to do here is to compare apples to apples, literally, and show you what it looks like when you put a check mark in that background color. Let's, um, I'm going to back out here just a little bit to 150 zoom. I'll right click. I'm going to choose to create an outline and set it to zero. OK. Click on that outline and drag it up. I want to show you something here. I think it's always easier if I can give you a visual. Once again, a right click, create outline, zero distance, OK. And I will drag that up. And if we take a look, this shows you what is actually happening when you ask for that background color. The apple then becomes a square design. Whereas if you choose not to put in the background color, the design takes the shape only of that design. All right, we'll go ahead and delete those two outlines. And I'm also going to uh, take a look and delete that square. By showing you those two apples, you may need to run your image through the wizard more than once to see which options you prefer. I do that all the time. Um, maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to change a color. Maybe I want the background. What does it look like? So you have options that you can play with. The other thing I wanted to bring to your attention over here in sequence view. Have you noticed that this color or all the colors from the designs have an RGB in front of them. And that stands for the red, green, blue, which is the color model used in computer graphics. Anything that is automated or auto-digitized in the software is based on graphics and it is going to be shown in an RGB color model. So that's what that is there. Um, if this is the new thought to you, let me show you quickly what it's, what's going on actually, is all the different colors have a number assigned to them and that's the number that you see picked up over in our sequence view. All right, Dory, we'll stop here for a moment. Are there any questions that are coming in? Yes, we, have, we do have a couple. Um, our friend Patty asks, how big can you enlarge these images while maintaining density, stitch length, etc.? The general rule accepted in the embroidery world is 20% up and 20% down. And I would apply that same rule uh, to the wizard as well. Okay. Um, we also have another question. Um, Shan our friend Shannon wants to know, can you choose which colors are added or deleted? Or I should say, can you choose what colors are deleted? That's what she asked. Okay. And yes, we can. If we go back into our wizard, and we'll just use our apple because he's still there. In our screen, in this color reduction screen, 
you can decide if I don't want that green, I can remove it. Now we don't see it because the preview, uh, the preview is on, but it's based on this color number right here. By removing that check mark, I won't have the green. If I bring that in, the green should not be a part of that design. So in essence, you can choose what colors are not included. But at that point, that really is a non-area. So I wouldn't be able to go back in easily and change that to a different color. Whereas if I leave that color in, I don't remove it, it's very easy for me to come over here to the sequence view and change that color to be whatever I wanted it to be. So most of the time, I don't remove a color during the wizard. I usually wait until the design comes to screen and then play around with it there. Okay. And my friend Deb asks, hey, when you save, does that overwrite the original image, or do you have to create a new name? Okie doke. When we, uh, when we do a save when we're coming out of paint, did you, um, Deb, do you mean that, or do you mean right now for on this screen if I save? Are if you talking you, about when we did the save and paint? No, um, right there. Okay. If we were going to move forward and save these apples to apples, we would do a file. Uh, let me back up here. Let me show you something before I even go there. Do you see down here on our uh, tab bar? Do you see where it has a design for? Mm -hmm. So right now it has it has no name. We have not saved it. So right now this is not overriding anything. But we would want to go into File, down to Save As, decide what folder we're putting it to, and give it a name, making very sure that I'm aware of where this design is going, and I would then do a save. So in no way is this my apples with the blue, in no way is that changing the original apples Windows meta file that we used for the wizard. Okay, and out of paint, might as well go the whole distance. That actually, because I did a save and came back, did you, uh, when we came in and did our apple here? No, we're talking about when you save it, when you go in and you work in paint. Uh -huh. Okay, right here I have, my, um, I have my spots back. Do you remember when I took those spots out out of paint and we did a save? Yes. But yet the next, time, the next time that I bring this design in, do you see how I still have those spots back? So it is not overriding the original Apple's Windows Meta file. Ah, very good. There's the visual right there. Yeah. Okay, and last but not least, got lots yes. of questions tonight. Good. Uh, our friend Norma wants to know, the satin stitch looks a little loose. Can you make it tighter? Well, actually, Nora, you're my plant in the audience because that's Norma. right where we're yes. headed. Norma, I'm sorry. Norma, you are um, my plant because that is where we're headed right now. So it's a great question, and I knew that there would be sharp people out in the audience that would notice this little apple is not as attractive as the big one. No matter how easy the wizard process is, the quality of the resulting stitch design still depends on the image quality. And once we get the embroidery on screen, we may need to do a bit of editing, as pointed out by Norma right here on our Apple. The first thing that I would address would be the core. We can see here with the beige of this apple does not match the beige of the large apple. If we come over here to sequence view, we have both complex fill and satin. So I'm going to choose the satin and remember that algorithm in the wizard is the one deciding the different sizes and um, angles and so forth of the design and is determining whether to put a satin or a fill stitch. But all we have to do here is do a right click, convert to complex fill, and that core looks just like our red apple core. I would do the same for the green. I'd come over here to sequence view. Notice that the green, both of those parts are the satin. 
So again, I would do a right click, convert to complex fill, and that fills in that apple nicely. There is one more thing that I would do with this design, and we did it uh, earlier with our quilting flower circle. I would come over here to the black in sequence view, come up here to my move to front, and go ahead and click on that. And what that does is it brings that black, it's the last thing stitched, so it just makes it a little bit more bolder um, than it was if it was the first thing stitched. While we're on this idea of editing, if we go back into our quilting design here, flower design, I don't think that that requires um, editing, so we'll go ahead and go to our second. Both our butterfly and our drink looks very nice, I think, if I look over that. But if we take a look here at our duck and our butterfly, we do have a bit of editing that needs to be done. I'm going to zero in, or zoom in actually, on our duck. And do you see how this area right here in the satin stitch is just a little bit wonky? I'm going to really come close to that so you can see it. Whoop, might come back just one. And I'm also going to change the color of that because I want you to be able to see the angle lines. We have the duck outline selected. Here's our little wonky area. Let's come over here to our shape key. And can you see that these yellow angle lines are right in this area where we're seeing that little bit of um, wonkiness? I don't think that's a word, but we'll use it. It's very easy to fix this. Here is an angle line and another angle, and that's where we're getting this slant on, this, on the satin stitch. All I need to do is right click on that one of those black dots and come down to delete the angle line. I still have this one, so I would right click, delete angle line. And the other thing, can you see that this one is just slightly angled? So I would grab that black dot and drag it down so it's more of a horizontal line. Come over here to my apply, and by removing those angles, you see that we have a much nicer, straighter satin stitch in that area. It's very easy to do. Uh, you would look around and see if there were any other areas that you want to correct. Um, I probably would come up here and do the exact same for these angle lines. I would right click, going to right click, delete the angle line, and right click, de uh, let's see, delete that angle line, and then this one I would probably drag and make it a little straighter across from each other, go ahead and do an apply, and we have a little nicer curve going around there. So it's very easy to do that kind of thing. Um, I'll go ahead and change our duck back though from blue to gold, so he sits prettier on the water. And then I would address the situation right here with our butterfly. And it's the same thing that Norma brought up before with our satins. So once again, I would select our pink area. We see over here in sequence view it is a satin. I'm going to right click, convert to complex fill, and do the same thing for the green right click, convert to, complex fill, and then this yellow. Um, the way that this is angled, that speaks to the artsy part of me, and I probably would allow that to stitch out on my test to see what that really looks like. But if you felt the need to change it, you certainly could. We do a right click, oops, let me select that first. The yellow, right click, convert to complex fill, and then everything matches. The other thing I might do is to select all of it, come over here to our density, and drop that down to a four. Of course, that would depend on what kind of fabric I'm putting it on, but it looks a little nicer here on screen. And then finally, the last thing that I would do, which I've done for the others, is choose that black come up to our move and move that to front so that it stitches out last and you can see it gives a little bolder feel to that butterfly. 
I have something created for you that I want to show you when we're talking about the image quality that you start with and what you end with. Because it is very important for you to have good artwork when you're doing this kind of thing with the wizard. Here's a butterfly, and this butterfly is actually included in your raster images. Um, it was right where the pink one was, and I like the look of this butterfly. If we get a little closer, you can see that it actually, to me, um, looks a little bit like a chalk drawing, or someone has done an overlay of inks, and I think it's a cool look. However, you can see that it's not the best choice when we're trying to turn this into stitches over here because just in this gold area here where the orange and the gold are, the wizard is trying to pick up both of those and you can see that it, it causes the breakup of all those satin areas in there. So do be aware of your original artwork when you're um, using the wizard. We have another comparison here. Let's go ahead and get a clean screen. We'll go back into our wizard and I'm going to go and browse. This time I am going to put it back to the list because I need to scroll through the alphabetical order until I get to hot dog. I think the summer is still with us and I always have time for one more hot dog. So we'll go ahead and do an open and we'll do a next. And here is our dog. And what I want to point out to you here is the image does not need to have each color outlined and there can be shading. If you see here with the mustard and the hot dog itself and certainly on the bun, we have a lot of shading going on and that's okay. The wizard will pick that up. Again, that algorithm is not only determining uh, satin versus fill stitch, but also how large an area will be assigned stitches. Once again, the white is the dominant color. We are not going to add those extra stitches to our hot dog. We're going to keep all the eight We'll go ahead and do a finish. The hot dog will come on screen. And when it does, you will see a combination of fill stitches and satin stitches as the wizard has designated. That will take just a moment. And soon we will have our delicious summer hot dog. And I will suggest while you're waiting for this, um, yes. move up your boom just a wee bit. Move it up out of my way? No, into your face. Into my face, thank you. Is that a little better? All righty. Now, in this case, I'm going to drop back to 100%, turn on our 3D, and move our hot dog over here. And as indicated, we have a combination of satin stitch and fill stitch. We have been working with the wizard, the auto-digitizing wizard, and that's because that's what tonight's webinar was about. But you do know that you have other choices when you are dealing with artwork. The wizard is just one choice, one option that you have to bring artwork into stitches. The other one, one of the other ones that we have is if we click up here on file and I come down here to import artwork. You may remember this hot dog is a vector image and vector images work with this command, import artwork. I'm going to double click on my bitmaps. I'm going to scroll over to find our hot dog. And we'll get him again and bring him to screen. Now it did just as indicated. It imported the artwork. I'm going to copy paste our artwork so we can have that original artwork to look at. And I'll bring our second one over here. Get this guy over just a little bit. But what I want to show you here is once we have artwork on screen, if I select all of that, I can do a right click, convert to complex fill, and in just a moment, we have our second hot dog. And as you compare them, you can see that the um, procedures are slightly different. When it did the complex fill, I didn't ask for some satin and some complex fill, so of course the entire hot dog is done in a fill pattern. Both of them are still designs that we could go in, change color, change fill pattern, whatever it is that we want to do. They are um, digitized designs. It's just the way that we brought them to screen. We have options. We have the wizard. 
we have file, import artwork, we also have the backdrop tool, and we have the artwork tool that is over here allowing us to draw all kinds of shapes. So Perfect Embroidery Pro gives us choices. Um, you have to decide which choice you want to use, and very often I'll try the same thing through maybe one or two of my processes to see what I like the best. One thing to remember about doing this artwork, if I select that black and drag it up, when we convert, that black is a solid area behind the artwork, so it changed all of that to stitches. If we take a look at the black on the wizard, it does it more like an outline. Very rarely will the wizard overlap stitches. Almost always it's going to um, have them in different areas, which, let me go ahead and do an undo and we'll put that back. And uh, actually what I would do with that black is I would right click, convert it to a steel or a run and a bean or whatever it is that I wanted to change that to. Um, again, if I open up this other document that, or file, this will show you also, this is done the same way. Here was our work, our vector artwork. This one was done as an import artwork. This one was done in the wizard. And I wanted to point out to you here that sometimes with the wizard, it's going to read that area um, oddly because it does not overlap stitches. And do you see how odd this shape is? And it fits right up in that shape. But because of that little bit of black line, that's why we get that open and close and so forth. So that's how the wizard is going to work. Very rarely will it overlap our stitches. So yes, we have an auto-digitizing wizard. And it is faster sometimes than using the background tool. But you may need to work with it a while to get the uh, design the way you want it to look. Remember the wizard is not the same as if we spent the time to manually digitize a design. All right, Dory, we'll stop there. Are there any questions to this point? Well, we just had one from our friend Chris who asks, does the program add sufficient overlap to the design elements? We can take a look right here. If we see our um, apple and we go into our underlay, you can see that it does add a perpendicular. So yes, automatically it's going to give us underlay. Um, you always have that option to add more if you'd like. Again, depending on your base fabric, um, the stabilizers and so forth used, if you feel that it's necessary to add any. We, we have that option as we do any time. Okay, what about the overlap, not the underlay? Oh, I beg your pardon. Um, nope, well, if we take... Not you. Okay. <laughs> okay. If we take a look at the wizard, okay, and we really blow it up to take a look, you can see that it does give us some. All right, we have some overlap right there in the red to the black and a little bit of gray on that black, just a little bit of yellow. So you might find in your test stitch out that you might want to increase that a little bit. Um, it, it just depends on the design, what we have. But it's one of those things as a digitizer. Remember, the auto-digitizing wizard is not going to um, give you a design that requires none of your attention. You still want to bring your knowledge uh, to the project. And again, I, we, we certainly would do a test stitch out of our designs too. So that's going to tell us whether we need a little bit more or not. Super. And we can, if, uh, if I understand you correctly, we can make the adjustments that we want to, to some degree on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, yes, good. We can. Yes, we can. We would simply go, you, you have a couple options, but one of them, the one I usually do is to go into that area and uh, use my shape tool and maybe grab some of those and extend them. Super. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. 
All right, our, our last area that we're going to be working with with the wizard is photos. I know there are those of you who use, want to use Auto Digitizing Wizard for photos, so we will address that. Once again, we'll go up into our wizard, and I'm going to go into Browse, and this time I'm going to go up a level to go into my Images folder. Here we have a couple of photographs that we're going to play with. This parrot, I just love this parrot, so we'll go ahead and start with him, and we'll do a next. Here he is in all of his glory, and I am going to size him down just a bit. I'll put him at 5 for our width, changing the height. I'll go ahead and do a next. And as we bring him in, um, one of the questions earlier, could we deal with our colors, can we take colors out and so forth. Here I can show you a little bit. If I turn on preview, we know that we have 15 colors. I'm going to delete uh, a color one by one by one, and I want you to pay attention to this area right down here in his feathers and also his beak, because when we start to remove colors, we're to 14, we're to 13, we're to 12, we're to 11, you see that you are losing detail in the photograph. All right, so you'll have to decide, is that important to you? What is important to you? Do you want more detail in your design, or do you want less threads to have to deal with when you're doing this stitch out? I'm going to leave all 15. I'll do a finish. It is going to take a moment to render because there are many, many stitches in a photograph. And one of the things that we need to remember, the photograph will always be clear because it's made up of hundreds and thousands of pixels from an almost infinite number of colors. And transferring those colors into a limited thread palette gives slightly different results. So whatever your photo is, um, do not expect the software to give you an exact duplicate of your photograph, it's very difficult to do that, to turn, um, again, hundreds of thousands of pixels of color into thread. And very often, a photograph at a high res has color in it that the human eye can't even discern. So it's one of those things when we start playing with photographs with our thread, that we're going to go more for an artsy look than the perfect rendition of the photograph. So I'll go ahead and drop him down to 100 so he's not quite in our face, and I think that parrot is pretty cool. Now, a couple of things with our parrot. Yes, I'm sure you see the combination of fill stitch and satin stitch. For me, I like this look. I like the combination, and I probably would leave that satin stitch in the parrot because it's going to give this texture. Since this is an artsy feel anyway to our photograph, I like that addition of a little bit of artsy look to it. One of the things I might do, though, is to select the dark green background and remove it. And there I have my little guy that would look quite nice on um, some fabric perhaps in a frame, whatever it is that I want to do for him. But I think it's a, a cool, artsy look for our parrot. Now, can you we'll show us, while you have that little dude on the screen, mm -hmm. show us where you would um, locate for us how long it will take to stitch out our little friend? We have two options, really. Up here, if you take a look at the status bar at the very top, our information bar for a Perfect Embroidery Pro, you see that this little guy has 35,000 stitches. And if you come here to File, down to Design Analysis, we go into there. Here for Production, click on that. You can see that uh, the machine set for generic and right here at a 600 per minute, stitches per minute, it's going to take a little over an hour. If you were to create your own machine, we have a generic, but let's say I add one and I want to add um, my alliance, and it has a max of 1,000 stitches per minute, 
I'll go ahead and do an OK. If I have my lamp alliance chosen, you can see that it'll take 47 minutes. So this design analysis production is a very nice tool to help you determine how long that will take. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Great question. We'll, we'll do another. Again, going into our wizard, into our browse, I am in the images folder. We're going to choose this beautiful butterfly, bring him into next. The first time, we're going to use our cropping handles. These work the same as your sizing handles do on our design page. And I'm going to really crop this guy to be a long, uh, narrow butterfly. Notice that when I cropped it, the size changes both height and width. I'll do a next. I'm going to leave all of my colors and do a finish. And what this is going to give us, again, I'm uh, feeling that these photos that are digitized are more on the art feeling than the um, exact duplicate. But I think this is beautiful. Let me back him out here and you can get a better look at him overall. And I think this would be a cool bookmark for someone who's worthy. Uh, add a tassel, maybe a little cord at the top, and there you have it. If you notice, there are some white area in here, and that's because these areas were so small or too small to render stitches in, so it left it white. Um, what I probably would do would be to do this guy on a black fabric so that it's going to not be noticeable. Um, and actually for me, because I am a little bit on the artsy-tartsy side, I like the white. I think it's just that little bit of interest that makes it um, look real, and I like that a lot. Okay, a couple other things to think about, and, and this is one where when we talk about photographs, people really are interested in doing people. I have a folder here, Stitched Snapshots. You might not have that if you do not own this software. Um, I'm going to come into here because there's a very pretty blonde lady that we're going to use her photograph. I'll do a next. I'm going to leave all of the defaults. You can see that this is a photograph. We do have a lot of shading and subtle color in there. I'll do a next. The software reads the colors as it can. We'll do a finish. And it'll take just a moment um, to come to screen. But one of the things to think about when you are stitching out your photos Again, there are a lot of stitches in this type of design. So think about that when you are hooping. Your base fabric should be something um, that is firm. Uh, you certainly don't want to use silk when you're putting that many stitches into a design. And also think about the stabilizer that you are using. I probably would use a cutaway mesh, uh, maybe float something else under the hoop. Um, it would depend on the type of fabric that I'm picking out. But do think of those things as well so that you are successful with your stitch out. Um, it's always hard to do a test stitch out with this kind of design that has so many stitches in it, but you don't want to put it on very expensive fabric to start with without having done a test stitch out. A couple of things I would do here. We can see right off the bat that it is not exactly like the photo. And it will not be, but I would come in and select this satin area of her cheek, do a right-click, convert to complex fill, and I would do the same for this chin area, right-click, convert to complex fill. And the other thing that I might do, this color right here in her eye, a very small beige, I might delete, and you can see how that allows the eye to pop a little bit more. I'm gonna back this out just a bit. I think it's easier if you see photos at a distance because you see more of the detail. So here's our lady, our photograph done in the wizard with the auto digitizing. And I have a, a, a slide to show you to do a comparison. Again, here is our original lady with all of the shading a photograph can offer. Over here on the right is our lady done in the auto digitizing wizard. But a comparison for you on the left. Dime has a software specifically created to digitize photos, and it is called Stitched Snapshots. Some of you are lucky enough to have received it free from your dealer, 
when you attended the A to Z embroidery event of Dimes. This stitched snapshots will be available for purchase next year. But you can tell the difference here with this software specifically designed for photographs. It can read it, the detail, um, quite well. And also take a look. Remember when I said photos have colors that the human eye can't even discern? And if you take a look at this, look at her hairline. If we really stare at that, we can see the color difference. But look at how stitched snapshots picked up that color right here as a red. And there's green and gray in her hair that we don't see, but that this software can pick out. Her eyes are much more detailed and so forth. So. Um, if photographs is something that you want to do to digitize a photograph, you might want to uh, take a look at the software coming out later, um, stitched snapshots. Very, very cool. All right, Dory, do we have any uh, final questions here? Well, I do want to just point out something. When you were rendering any of these pictures that had a lot of stitches, I noted that you had information uh, up at the top of your screen that said not responding. Yes. That's exactly where it was, right up there where your mouse is right now. Yes. Um, I do want to point out, you did not move your mouse, nor did you click your mouse during that time. Is that correct? I did not. I was patient. Yes, and that is something that we all have to learn. I have a filthy habit of getting impatient which of course makes my uh, software very unhappy. I, I have, admire the fact that you were able to show a certain amount of restraint. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest that our customer also restrain themselves. Do not touch the mouse when it is non-responding because that is simply it's working, it's working, it's working. It's working. It should have a better phrase up there instead of not responding because we do think, uh-oh, what's something's not working, but it is indeed working. And if we are patient, we are given this um, beautiful digitized photograph. Having played with photographs uh, many times, I know that they, they really do, the amount of stitches that are in them, they do take much longer to render because the software has to make lots of decisions as to that design. So be patient. It is worth the wait. Yes, and last but not least, for all of you that do not have a copy, you can get, you only can get a copy of the photo stitch, the stitch snapshots, I'm sorry. You can uh -huh. only get that if you go to an event. You cannot get it from a dealer. You cannot get it from Dime. You cannot get it unless you go to an event. That's it. Yes. Okay. We, one other thing I did want to point out, um, as we play with Wizard, don't be afraid to do something out of your comfort zone or different from the things that I showed you this evening. Here are two different um, pieces of art. This one done by a friend of mine. Do make sure if you have permission to use it. But this was a uh, drawing painting and I took that through the wizard and turned it into stitch. I like that look very much. Those of you that get the Dime magazine, this last issue July, August, had the article that I did on turning stencils to stitches. And this was the one that I used in the project. Here is the stencil that I scanned in and turned that scan into stitches. Uh, in the article, I don't, I did not use the wizard, but this e um, preparing for this evening, I used the wizard and this is the result. Uh, came in quite nice. So don't be um, afraid to do different kinds of things in your wizard. You'll be pleasantly surprised, I think, with um, what you're able to do. I want to thank you all for joining me this evening, as always, and I hope you will play with the magic of the wizard. Have a good evening. Good night, everyone.